Yo, it's Math Mixer. Everybody loves math. Gotta love the teacher. Who that be? Miss Lowry. All right, welcome. Today we are going to be doing a different kind of probability. This is called geometric probability. You use geometric probability when you can't count the possible outcomes, when the possible things that could happen are infinite. The first example is to figure out the probability that a random throw at our chalkboard will hit this orange trapezoid. To simulate randomness, my volunteer will blindfold me, and then she'll spin me around. Right, she's going to turn me around so that I get a little bit dizzy. Okay, that's quite enough. I'm dizzy. I know. All right, I'm right now. Okay, ready? All right, now I'm going to whip the ball. You got the camera on the board? Yep. All right, here we go. Oh, God. Let's figure out the probability of hitting that trapezoid at random. Capital P means the probability of, and in our argument, we'll write trap for hitting the trapezoid. The probability will be actually a ratio where we compare the area of the trapezoid to the area of the entire blackboard because the ball could have hit anywhere on the blackboard and we want to know what are the chances that it landed in the orange trapezoid. So we will compare the two areas. The area of a trapezoid is one half times the quantity a plus b close quantity times h. And the area of the blackboard is just base times height. Remember, on a trapezoid, the two bases are usually not the same length, so we call them a and b. 12. And the height is the perpendicular distance between those two bases, and this one is 9. And of course, these are in. Mm -hmm. All right, we've opened the boy over here. Uh, it's 144 inches by its height, which is 46 inches. All right. Have it yet? One percent. Pardon me? One percent. One percent? Okay. So we're hitting approximately one percent. So I have a one percent chance of hitting the orange trapezoid if I am throwing completely at random. Justin's driving out west on a perfectly straight road. And there are some exits on this road. Exit A, exit B, exit C, exit D, and exit E. The distance between the exits are not the same as you can see. Justin's going to have an accident. One of his tires is going to blow. And we want to know what is the probability that it's going to happen between exit B and exit C? Symbolically, we write this probability as P of segment BC, the chance that the tire is going to blow on segment BC. And mathematically, we simply write it as a ratio of the distance from B to C compared to the entire distance of the road from A to E. So it looks like 6 over 46, which simplifies down to approximately 13%. All right, example three is about me, my day, and gray hair, okay? Now, here we see a beautiful chart of my day. As you can see, here I'm at school, 135 degrees of a whole circle. Here I could be clean for 
22.5 degrees. Here I sleep for 116 degrees. have to do is compare this section, the degrees of this section, to the entire circle. Okay. So I've got 22.5 degrees compared to 360 degrees. There's 10? Yeah. Okay. So approximately 6.3% chance of it happening while I'm Okay, now the final geometric probability example is the famous dartboard ring problem. You see these all over the place, especially in SA, on your SAT tests and standardized intelligence type tests. What's the probability that the dart will land in this ring right here? Okay, in any of these black and white sections right around here. I find the probability of Landing a dart in that outer black and white ring here. Okay? All right, now to do that, what I've got to find is the area of the ring. So I've got to find the area of the ring, and I need to then divide it by the area of the entire board. All right, so it sounds easy. Go ahead and find the area of the ring. What you have to do is this. You have to think of it as a big subtraction problem, right? You're going to find the area of this entire circle right here. And then you're going to find the area of this circle right here, where my hand is. And you're going to rip out that area that's in the center. Boom! All right? Then you'll just be left with the donut. Does that make sense? Find the area of the big circle, find the area of the hole. Rip out the hole, and you're left with the ring. Okay, so let's see if we can write that down. Okay, to find the ring, we're going to have the area of the big circle minus the area of the small circle. And what you will be left with is the ring. And then all of that will be compared to the area of the board. Oh, does anybody remember the, the formula for the area of a circle? Darn it. Uh, right. Okay. That's going to be like super important. So let's put this over here. Area is equal to pi times radius squared. I'm going to put that in a little uh, rectangle because that they're assuming that you know how to. So you're going to get 36 pi minus 16 pi all over, what, 81 pi? Okay, now 36 pi's take away 16 pi's is, is 20 pi's. 20 pi's, okay? And you take 20 pi over 81 pi. Anything that can simplify here? Pi. Yes. Pi divided by pi is one. So you don't have to get a horrible, you know, irrational number in in this fraction because it'll it'll cancel out. All right. So then you're going to be left with 20 over 81. All right. So let's go ahead and pop that into your calculator. 20. Does anybody concur with that? Approximately 25%. So you've got a 25% chance of landing in this outer ring right here. 